Good morning, folks. I hope you caught episode 22 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle yesterday. We've got a ton of top stories to hit today, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star was silent, absolute quiet. Few dark coronal holes turning through there. Another of the coronal hole streams intensified the solar wind plasma at Earth overnight, pushing just over 500 kilometers per second, sustaining the KP index at slight elevation, but nothing more. In the Bahamas yesterday, they were dancing amidst rare small hailstones, gone as fast as they came, but worth the note. Meanwhile, the major weather concern is the unfolding flood situation in the Midwest. The situation has been ongoing since the snow began to melt and the spring storms are on deck next. Amazing peace hit archive on a new eye on the sun and some of its return images. Fairly incredible array of analytical tools and products with some of the best resolution at granule level in existence. Speaking of the sun, a new magnetohydrodynamic CME prediction model will work much better than the kinetic model. This is about seven years in the making in terms of plasma dynamics in the solar wind. Fun article posted about Voyager that helps understand inside versus outside of the solar system. Magnetic fields of the galaxy take over just outside of the heliosphere, with solar wind crashing in the bottom panel there, and high energy cosmic rays from beyond going up in the top panel. Up next, a proposal for the decadal survey I'm favoring at the moment, high definition NOVA events, yes please, and more on these magnetic field oriented stretch marks in the expanding shells if you would be so kind. Sister studies and complement today starting with the existence of rivers late into the Martian history, much later than believed. And with that fact, let's know it's not just the south pole of Mars with an underground sea and lake. Water exists throughout the crust underground at the red planet locked beneath a thin red shell. Even though dark matter is dead, decaying, and pungent, it isn't stopping the hundred or so dark matter studies funded with grants from finishing out or starting to ask for more money. But right now, just take in a confirmation that they do not interact with photons. Now they want to try to think of new ways to describe such dark matter, and I want them to realize the real reason they don't see any effects on photons or anything else. Quick little aesthetic beauty here of a cosmic butterfly carrying hundreds of brand new baby stars. Link below, and now on to our top two stories. It appears that that X-ray chimney paper in Nature, the one we all clamored about as being the inner Z-pinch effects at our galaxy, was a stolen study. A number of Japanese scientists published on it in 2013 and earlier in 2019 as well. I have personal experience with this and can tell you 100% nature is a thief house or incredibly low morality and business standards, possibly the worst on earth. Last but not least, Leslie Gray, one of the observer's top three favorite solar climate forcing scientists has led a team to discover the actual forcing parameters on the Walker cell. Almost all of the solar forcing on weather and terrestrial climate is driven through the Walker and Hadley cells, but much of it is not well understood behind a statistical correlation. This is a huge leap in that understanding and why it's the sun, not cows, not your SUV. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Again, please catch episode 22 if you didn't already. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.